like to sleep? Yeah. Congratulations, I do too. Now, how many of you can relate to the following scenario? You come home and you set yourself a scheduled deadline. You say, I'm going to eat at 6, I'm going to go to sleep at 9, and I'm going to study for the quiz tomorrow between those hours. Except, the 6 p.m. turns into 10 p.m., that 10 p.m. turns into 1 a.m., and then you didn't study at all, and you flunked the test tomorrow. If you can relate to this in any way, I have good news and bad news. The bad news is that this is completely terrible and completely destructive of your very important sleep schedule. The good news, you're not alone. 20% of people today have a problem with sleeping, and that 20% is even greater when you account for people who have a sleeping problem in general. And further good news, it's very easy to fix. So I'm going to step back and ask a really broad question. What is sleep? The answer, no one knows. To be frank, even after a millennia of sleeping and decades of researching into what sleep is, no one has a clear answer to what sleep is, but we do know why we do it. And I have a few theories that I have researched, and they are not 100% true theories although they are what scientists have said are the best possible explanations of why we may sleep. So, first off, is with energy conservation. Now, think back to your ancestors, and think about what they did during at the night. They probably weren't hunting and gathering because they weren't very successful in the dark. And that's for a good reason. They're able, when people sleep, they're able to conserve that energy and save it for a later time. The second is with rejuvenation. While you may be asleep and you may not be conscious, your body is actually bustling, doing things, and repairing things for you. Your muscles are growing, your cells are synthesizing, and proteins are being created for your, for your growth. So overall, you, sleep is important with your growth. Now, if you take a look at this image here uh, showing activity, you can see that although there's only a 10% difference between when your brain is awake and when it's asleep, that 10% does add up and it's actually a lot of activity. A lot of activity and a lot of energy that your brain is saving when you're asleep. Not only are you breathing slower, your heart rate decreasing, but also body temperature decreasing, but overall, doing this all at one time is actually more efficient for your body, and you're able to have this sort of better reconciliation with yourself, and you're able to have a better time. Now, you may be looking at that 90 minute cycle there, and I'll just be explaining. And it's the fact that while we sleep, it's through 90 minute cycles. And this 90 minute cycle, you may have heard of the REM cycle, which is through four steps. And it's overall the cycle that you go through while you go through this cycle of sleep. Now you may be asking, why is it 90 minutes? And I'll tell you, I don't know, because no one knows. 90 minutes is just the time that it takes for our bodies to follow us through that cycle. And with a lot of things in life, that cycle is something that's very important to us and that we should be looking to address. But I'll talk about that later. For now, I'm going to talk about the last reason of why we sleep. And it has to do with something called brain plasticity. Now you may, be, you may be thinking to yourself, my brain is not made of plastic. And I'll tell you, that's not what this means. Brain plasticity, brain plasticity actually has to do with how you take short-term memories and how it forms into long-term memories. I want you to think back to the last dream that you had. How many of you will remember your last dream? Not a lot of hands, and that's for good reason. It's because your brain is actually forgetting all the useless information. Uh, here's another example. How many of you remember the Pythagorean theorem? A squared plus B squared. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Probably I'll tell you that. Now I'm going to ask, what did you have for lunch last Thursday? Not as many hands. But, and that's again for good reason. Your brain is playing out the useless information in your brain. I want you to think of a sponge. And look at this sponge and look how it's taking in water. At the start of the day, your brain is like that sponge. It's an empty, dry sponge. And you take in information as the day goes on. You talk to people, you learn things, and overall your brain is taking in that information. And as the day goes on, and as it comes to nighttime, your brain is filled with this new set of information. And what, is your, what do you do when you sleep? You bring it out. You bring it out to dry, and you're able to process that information that you took in, and then some of it becomes long-term memories that some of it's thrown out. What happens when you don't sleep? your brain becomes overloaded. You aren't able to take in new information, and you aren't able to form those long-term memories. And this is problematic when you're trying to, say, study for a test, and you don't have that sleep there to wring the sponge dry. Now, this is why people may tell you that when you're making a big life decision, or you're making some sort of grand revolution, that you should try to take sleep. And that's for good reason. It's because you're able to take in internalized information and process it. Now, the problem, a lot of us don't get enough sleep. The rec doctor recommended the daily average of, the daily hours of sleep is eight hours, and a lot of us are already falling under those eight hours. And you would think that doctors recommend it for a reason, right? So 
taking in that eight hours is actually used for us to rejuvenate our brains and for us to refresh it for the next day. And even after one day without sleep, our amygdala actually goes into overdrive. Our amygdala is the part of our brain that does that sponge squeezing thing I talked about earlier. But basically, it, it refreshes your brain to form these memories. And after one day, you turn into an emotional slush. You don't make decisions as quickly, you aren't able to react as quickly, and overall you aren't able to take in new information. So this is the part I would tell you to take out your pen and paper to take notes. But well, most of you probably didn't bring pen and paper, so I have come up with a cheesy acronym for you to remember my advice on how to get better sleep. And that's sleep. So what this stands for is to slow down, launch up, enthusiasm, environment, and to plan. And I'll be going through each one of what you can do to how to get better sleep. So first up is the slow down. So you probably know that routines are useful. You probably have routines. So how many of you actually have a bedtime routine right now? To, to those that raised their hands, congratulations. To the rest of you, I won't say congratulations, but I can tell you to create a routine because of how useful it is. Your body is designed to be accustomed to routines. When you have a routine, you're able to follow through and your, your body actually becomes accustomed to that routine. Sleeping at the same time every day, waking up at the same time every day, it actually becomes internalized and you, your sleep quality actually improves. Now, you may not be able to set a routine right away, but I can give you some other tips, like avoid coffee. Now, I may be guilty myself of taking a morning coffee every single day, but I can tell you that to not drink coffee in the afternoon. Coffee actually has a lingering effect for up to 12 hours, and you may think that afternoon coffee will give you an energy boost, but it actually takes away from your sleep with that lingering effect. And lastly, you probably already heard of this, but stay away from screens. Having light, any sort of light in general, is actually hardwired into our biology. Think back to your ancestors again. You, they probably didn't have like lights, lamps, or even these screens growing up, right? Like, they have the natural system of the sun, and that's why we think come to that circadian rhythm, and why we sleep at certain times, and why we wake at certain times of the day. So if you can, avoid screens for up to one hour before you sleep, and if you must, at least try to get some sort of blue light filter. There are a ton of apps that you can download, and that would help with your slowing down into sleep. Second is to launch up. Now, aside from just sleeping in a nice, Timely manner. Waking up in a timely manner helps too. And although you may not have a set routine of how you get up, waking up and launching yourself up in the right attitude actually sets your mood for the day. Now, I want you to think and compare what, how you wake up on a weekend to how you wake, compare to wake up on a weekday. On a weekday, you might be up at 7:30 and you might be fully dressed and have your breakfast at 7 uh, at 8, and then you might be ready to go to school at 8:30. Now, compare that to a weekend. What are you probably doing? Sleeping, right? And that's actually the mindset that you have with launching up and getting your day started. Because of that, because of that mindset that you don't have to do anything, you aren't as inclined to follow through. And setting that for yourself, setting that routine, actually increases your productivity throughout the day. What I can tell you though, is a way to get rid of that deathly kind snoozer that you probably have set 30 alarms in the morning to just wake yourself up. Instead of Following that addiction of hitting the snooze button, there are ways to make the snooze button, with, to get rid of that snooze button. Try placing your alarm on the other side of the room, or get someone else to wake you up. But have some sort of way to force yourself up and out of bed, so that you're able to wake up the right side of bed. And if you have curtains, make sure to keep them open, because again, with blue light, if you're able to wake up with blue light, you wake up in a better mood. Next, with enthusiasm. Enthusiasm, although it may not seem like something that is good towards sleep, it's actually very crucial to how you sleep. Simply thinking that you'll get good sleep actually improves the quality of your sleep. It's sort of like a placebo effect. And having the enthusiasm to think that you have you are going to get enough sleep actually improves the quality of your sleep and overall improves how you sleep in general. Now, the next one is a little bit more important and it has to do with environment. There are like the routines and the things that you eat that you can't control, but there's other things that you can control in your environment that actually affect how you sleep. Firstly, with the bed. If you are looking for a bed, if, although this would vary from person to person, it is generally that you find something in between very hard as a rock to soft as a marshmallow, something in between that is able to support your body, and that's the best sort of bed mattress for you. For a pillow, as long as it's something that supports the back of your neck, you're able to sort of support those muscles and have that uh, sleep in a good position. 
And as for sleep position, sleeping, it is scientifically best for you to sleep on your back. Although this may not work for everyone, it's actually the way to relieve the most amount of stress from your body and, able, and provides you with the best sleep. And lastly, P for plan. So you may have, remember that 90 minute cycle thing that I said earlier? 90 minute cycles actually helps with how you sleep as well. If you're able to time your sleep cycles to start and end in 90 minute intervals, you're actually able to sort of maximize how, your, how well your sleep is. If you say sleep at 10.30 p.m. and then plan to wake up at 7.30 p.m., those are perfect 90 minute cycles and it actually helps improve the quality of, of your sleep. Now, you may not work, it may not be exactly 90 minutes for everyone, but overall following this mechanism has helped and it has helped you in getting better sleep. And lastly with planning, remember those naps that are so crucial that I remembered, that I mentioned earlier? Um, it actually checks out with it, through these graphs. If you look at the very left graph, humans sleep monophasically. And humans are actually the only creatures on Earth to sleep with a once-a-day sleep cycle. Almost every other creature on Earth has a different sort of sleeping pattern. They don't just sleep once throughout the day. And think of babies even. They tend to take naps throughout the day very heavily. It's just that our society and culture sort of has pushed us to take one day sleeps. And this isn't just bad for how productive you are throughout the day, but it actually takes away from how productive you are uh, with your sleep. So if you are able to take a nap during the day, as you can see, the blue sleep time is spread out a lot more, and it's much more refreshing for your brain to take in new information. Now, this is something unique that you may not have thought of, instead of just taking naps. You can try taking multiple sleeps, and this is again called bi-basic sleeping. And now, you may not be able to sort of take a nap in the middle of your calculus exam, but um, if you are able to, say, sleep at 7 and wake at 10, and then spend some time to do some work, and then sleep again at say 3 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. You're still able to get those 90 minute cycles, and you're able to set yourself into the mindset of not only extending your sleep, but being able to be productive during those hours. Now, there are actually a multitude of other ways that you can sleep, and I won't go into them, but I, overall, I want you to think back to this. Not that we're evolving into sleepless, sleepless zombies, but that we can overall change how we sleep. You don't have to follow every single thing I said to heart, and you probably shouldn't, but I would want you, uh, but the reason I'm bringing all these tips to you is that I hope to improve your sleep, and I hope to be able to bring you new tips that you can use for your sleep. And although this, all these tips may not work for everyone, I hope that you all have gained a little bit more insight into why you sleep, and maybe find some tips on how you can get better sleep. And in the words of Kanye West, he says, I love sleep, it's my favorite. And from this talk, I hope that you all take in, to, take in sleep to be a little more serious and hope that sleep is your favorite too. Thank you.